Many of us know what it is to rediscover the love and the presence of God after living in a kind of wilderness. I'm here in Rome for the feast of a saint who devoted his life to bringing to people the message of God's love and his closeness to those who are searching for him. The saint I'm talking about is Saint Paul of the Cross, founder of the Passionist Congregation. People describe us as uh, down to earth. They describe us as having a wonderful sense of humor. They describe our hospitality. They describe us as very compassionate confessors and counselors. And you wouldn't think that. I mean, because saying, well, here's a group that preaches Christ crucified, uh, lives uh, uh, or tries to live uh, a penitential life, has a spirituality of the cross. You would think that we would be rather morose people and rather depressed. And yet at the same time, it seems to be a community of hope that can help people to move through their suffering and to see their suffering as the face of Christ. St. Paul of the Cross um, had this idea of following the great mystics, uh, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and Tola, um, that he was nothing and God was everything. And so he put himself totally at God's disposal. In his approach, he was really doing something very profound. He was saying to the people that if you don't, in some sense, know Christ, and if you don't have a way of talking to Christ, which I would call prayer, then it's going to be very, very difficult to keep any sort of contact with God. Paul was born in the town of Ovada in northern Italy on January 3rd, 1694, in a room above his father's tobacco shop. His full name is recorded in the register of baptisms, Paolo Francesco Danei. His mother had 15 children, but only six survived to adult life. The family moved several times due to his father's business troubles. Paul was seven years old when they moved to the hilltop town of Cremolino. Here his mother taught him to read and write, and when he was old enough, sent him to school at the Carmelite Priory. When Paul was about 16, the Danei family moved to Campo Ligure, not far from the coast. Paul was sent to Genoa to continue his education. While on a visit home from college, he went, as he often did, to hear a sermon at the parish church. Whatever the priest said that day was to spark something of a conversion or a profound spiritual revelation for Paul. He was so overwhelmed by what he heard about the greatness of God's love for him, for him personally as well as all humankind, that his life was never the same again. And Paul resolved that he would give his life completely to God. Only at the time, he had no idea what that might mean. Then one day, as he walked along the coast near Genoa at a place called Sestri Ponente, he saw a little chapel on a hill. As soon as I saw it, he wrote later, my heart longed for that place of solitude. Still unsure of what to do, Paul moved to Castellazzo, to the north, between Genoa and Turin, where his uncle was a priest. When his uncle died, he left all the family's property to Paul, on condition that he marry. When the will was read at the Church of San Carlo, Paul renounced the inheritance in favor of his brothers and sisters, saying that he wished to keep for himself only a breviary. According to St. Vincent Strombi, Paul's first biographer, he turned to the crucifix in the sacristy and said, My crucified Lord, I protest that I want nothing of this inheritance except this breviary, since you alone are enough for me, my God, my only good. 
While living in Castellazzo, Paul started going to Mass at the Church of the Capuchin Franciscans. A priest here was able to guide him in prayer and listened as Paul worked out what God wanted him to do. I had the idea of wearing a poor black tunic of coarse cloth, of going barefoot, of living in very deep poverty. In short, by God's grace, leading a penitential life, I had an even greater desire to withdraw into solitude. This I would do in response to God's loving invitation, for in his infinite goodness he was calling me to leave the world. Then, walking quietly one day, he was filled with a profound sense of peace. He received an interior vision which was to focus his mind on the future. At that moment, I saw myself clothed in a long black garment with the white cross on my breast. Paul went to live in a little cell beside the sacristy of the Church of San Carlo in Castellazzo. He kept a diary. The text reveals his thoughts and emotions, inspirations and temptations, and is recognized as the classic text of the greatest mystic of the 18th century. Paul's retreat experience was centered on the truth of God's love as shown in the passion of Jesus. Paul felt the need to be at one with Jesus in his suffering so as to bring the compassion of God to those who suffer. I had great fervor mingled with tears in praying for the conversion of poor sinners. I had also special tenderness in imploring God in his mercy to found the holy congregation quickly and to send forth some people for his greater glory and for the good of their neighbors. This desire to work for the good of others also led him to pray for the healing of divisions between Christians. Twice during the retreat we find him praying for England and the neighboring kingdoms, that there will be among English-speaking Christians an increase of faith and love. Paul told Bishop Gattinara that he wanted to go to Rome to ask the Pope to give approval to his rule and let him found a community. The Bishop wasn't so sure that another new community was needed. He hoped Paul would continue to live as a hermit. But Paul wasn't one to work alone. He was always looking for companions to share his life and mission. With this in mind, he went to Genoa to find a ship that would take him to Rome. When he arrived in Rome, Paul found a place to stay at a pilgrim's hostel near the river Tiber. From there, he set out next morning for the Pope's summer palace, the Quirinale. The president of Italy lives here now, but it was just as well guarded in 1721 when Paul arrived at the door with his rule of life and asked to see the Pope. There he stood, unshaven and barefoot, in a shabby black robe of rough cloth, seeking approval for a religious community that didn't exist. Well, it was all too much for the Pope's doorman, who told him to go away. Do you know how many loafers we get here every day, he said, as he showed Paul the door. His mission seemed a complete failure. He wandered down the hill towards the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Inside, he found the chapel of the Madonna, went in and knelt down to pray. Paul realized that it was not yet time for presenting the rule to the Pope. That day would come. In the meantime, he must be faithful to the inspiration God had given him. Before the icon of Mary, he made a vow to promote the memory of the passion of Jesus and to gather companions who would do the same. The next morning, Paul left the pilgrim's hostel and walked to the riverbank. The Ripa Grande was where boats going down the river from the city were moored. He found one to take him to the coast. He decided to go back to Monte Argentario to look for a place to stay. <laughs> 